If a chemical equation has the same polyatomics on both sides of the arrows, you can balance the equation by balancing the ions. The first thing you'll want to do anytime you notice that you have a polyatomic is check to see if the polyatomics are intact on both the reactant and product side of the equation. In this first example, nitrate is present in aluminum nitrate and also present in nitric acid. Sulfate is present in sulfuric acid and it's also present in aluminum sulfate. We can use a shortcut when balancing this equation by keeping the polyatomics as one single unit. So we're going to do the same thing that we did in class where we're going to list out the elements and how many that we have, except this time we're going to treat the polyatomics as one thing. So I'm going to write down aluminum and then we have nitrate and we have hydrogen and sulfate. I'm going to do that exact same list on the right hand side. So aluminum, nitrate, hydrogen, and sulfate. The next thing I'm going to do is just count how many of each we have. First of all, to start off with, we have one aluminum. We have three nitrates. So the subscript down here indicates that we have three of those nitrates. We have two hydrogens and one sulfate. On the product side, we have two aluminums, one nitrate, one hydrogen, and three sulfates. I'm going to start this problem by balancing out the aluminums. On the reactant side, we only have one aluminum. On the product side, we have two. So I'm going to fix that by placing a two in front of the aluminum nitrate. Immediately, I'm going to recount how many of each I have. So I now have two aluminums, and I have two times three nitrates. So that gives me six nitrates on my reactant side. I'm going to follow that over to the product side. I currently only have one nitrate there, and so I'm going to fix that by putting a six in front of the nitric acid HNO3. So again, I'm going to recount my polyatomics and my atoms that are associated with the change I just made. So I have six nitrates now, and now I have six hydrogens. So we're going to fix that here. I'm going to follow that change back over to the reactant side, and I currently have two hydrogens. I need six hydrogens. To do that, I'm going to place a three in front of the sulfuric acid compound H2SO4. Again, I'm going to fix so this, so I'm going to have six, and then I have for my sulfates, I have three sulfates. And that should be balanced. So I have two aluminums, six nitrates on both sides, six hydrogens, and three sulfates. Here is another example involving multiple polyatomics. Using our little trick from the floor, we're going to divide the equation based off of the reactants on the left-hand side and the products on the right-hand side. And we'll go ahead and count how many of each we have. Ammonium, which is NH4, there are three on the reactant side and only one phosphate to start off with. There's one barium and two hydroxides. On the product side, we have one ammonium. We now have two phosphates, three bariums, and only one hydroxide. To begin this process, we're going to start with the non-polyatomic that's not balanced, which is barium. On the reactant side, we need to have three bariums. To do that, I'm going to place a three in front of barium hydroxide to balance out the bariums on both sides. As we did in the previous example, we're going to immediately recount how many bariums and how many hydroxides we have. So we now have three. And for hydroxides, we have three times two. So we have six hydroxides on the reactant side immediately going to follow that onto the product side and adjust the hydroxides on the product side to match the reactant side. Since I have six and I have no extra subscripts in the ammonium hydroxide group, I'm going to place a six in front of the ammonium hydroxide and recount. So I now have six hydroxide and I have six ammoniums. I'm going to follow that change through to the reactant side. Okay, so I have three currently on the reactant side, and the number I need to multiply by three to get to six would be two. So I'm going to place a two 
in front of ammonium phosphate. Again, that changes how many ammoniums we have to six, which is good, that's what we need, and it changes our number of phosphates to two. Well, when I examine that on the reactant side, from the reactant side, sorry, to the product side, the phosphates are now balanced. Everything is balanced, so we have two ammonium phosphates, three barium hydroxide, six ammonium hydroxides, and one barium phosphate. Another common problem that students will encounter when balancing equations that involve the polyatomic hydroxide is that it will often appear as hydroxide on one side of the equation, but then it will appear in water on the other side. There's a simple fix to this. If you think about water as being a combination of hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions and rewrite water whenever you see it that way um, in equations where hydroxide appears on the product or reactant side, this becomes a little bit easier to balance. We're going to go ahead and balance this out using the same method we've used before. We're going to say calcium, hydrogen, and hydroxide. Being very careful to keep this hydrogen separate from the hydrogen that exists in the hydroxide. Again, I'm going to list those out on the product side. So calcium, hydrogen, hydroxide. And we have one calcium, one hydrogen, one hydroxide, one calcium, two hydrogens, and two hydroxides. So again, we're going to start by balancing this out using um, either the hydrogen or the hydroxide. It doesn't really matter in this case which we'd start with. So I'm going to start by using the hydroxide. I'm going to place a two in front of the water and that will give me two hydro hydroxides and two hydrogens. And then following that over, I have two hydrogens, which is great. And then looking at my calciums, my calciums are already balanced. So this was as simple as just putting a two in front of water. It is not always necessary to use this method um, of rearranging the water. And in some cases, it could actually be more confusing. So one trick to look for to know whether or not you should make water as HOH or leave it as H2O is to look to see if hydrogen exists in a compound or on its own somewhere on the same side as your hydroxide. This worked really well in this case because we have hydrogen gas, which is by itself. And that hydrogen gas is actually coming from the hydrogen ions in the water. And um, so in this case, it worked really well. There are other examples where that won't work as nicely. I'll show you an example of that right now. Now we're going to look at an example where rearranging water to the HOH instead of H2O wouldn't really be helpful. In this example, we have iron three hydroxide. So we see that hydroxide group, and then that decomposes to form iron three oxide plus water. What we can quickly see here is that while we have water and we could rearrange it to be HOH, then we'd have a hydroxide group on the product side and we'd have a hydroxide group on the reactant side, we would quickly be questioning what to do with that hydrogen since there's no hydrogen present on its own on the reactant side. So this really isn't going to be our best option for an equation like this. Again, the key to knowing if you're going to use HOH versus um, water is to look to see is there additional hydrogen kind of by itself or in a second compound on the opposite side of the water. All right, so we're going to just use our traditional method of listing out our elements and counting how many we have and just do some basic balancing. So on the reactant side, we have one iron, three oxygens, and three hydrogens. On the product side, we have two irons, a total of four oxygens, we have to count here, and the oxygens in the water, and we have two hydrogens. We're going to start this process by balancing out the irons. We'll avoid the oxygen since it does occur in two compounds on the product side. We'll avoid that until the very last if we need to balance it at the end. So we'll start by balancing out the irons by placing a two in front of the iron three hydroxide. That's going to immediately change iron to two. We now have two times three oxygens, so we have six oxygens. And we have two times three hydrogens, so we have six hydrogens. 
Following the hydrogen change over to the product side, I'm going to place a three in front of our water to change the number of hydrogens to six. And then I'm going to recount my oxygens. So I have three oxygens plus three additional oxygens. That changes my oxygen number to six. The balanced equation then is two iron three hydroxides yields one iron three oxide plus three waters. And that is all we have to do in that case.